I'm a firm believer in like stress is a direct correlation with like optimal hormones. I do believe that. Now, mm -hmm. obviously there's other factors and genetic factors, trauma and all that stuff. Right. But I do think that number one, you should be getting your blood work done testing that. And I've been saying that forever, but after you test, then it's like, okay, what do we, what do we do? And I, I do cold therapy and I do hot therapy. So every night I do the sauna, I work out and then I do the sauna and I crank it, uh, to the point where it's like that uncomfortable feeling, which is called dimorphin. So dimorphin is the same feeling that alcoholics get when they uh, try to quit drinking and you're, and you literally are dying. It's the same feeling that you get in the sauna. It's called dimorphin. And it's that very uncomfortable, disgusting feeling where you want to get out, but you're just pushing through it, just like relentless juggernaut Spartan, like, no, I got to do this. And it just is disgusting, nasty dimorphin feeling that generates heat shock proteins, which helps your body repair, increases growth hormone, et cetera, and will increase your lifespan as well. Uh, cold therapy. There's been so, so many uh, studies on cold shock therapies and stuff and, and cold shock, um, uh, cold shock, uh, proteins. So I do a cold therapy and then I also do heat. I think heat's probably better for longevity. Cold is probably better for, I would say, action and performance. Um, I don't think anything trumps the cold. And then also, but, but for longevity, I would go heat. Uh, that's, that's one of the biggest things. And then meditative practice uh, as well. I don't like to sit still. It's very hard for me to meditate. And, you know, it, you, you think, especially as an alpha male, that you'll lose your edge. And you don't lose your edge, but you don't get as much stuff done. But there's a caveat, you get the right stuff done. So a lot of people like busy work, but you're not actually being efficient. And when you meditate, you start to realize what actually is important. And you cut out and you start to slowly because it's a process, you start to cut out um, a lot of the bullshit and the distractions. And I like to say, uh, whenever my friends uh, start giving me some bullshit distraction stuff that doesn't matter for our end result. I'm like, bro, don't get lost in the sauce. Let's go stay on track. And, uh, so that, so, you know, he throws it back to me here and there. Um, but I, I think meditation is a, is a good thing. It doesn't matter. You can do TM, you can do traditional, uh, I think hot yoga, anything that you're like pushing your body to that limit. And, you know, and if you can, you know, create dimorphin, which is not a good feeling, but mm -hmm. that's what, will uh, we'll keep you going for sure and, and help the longevity, right? You want to get like right to the point where you're going to die when you're young and then you're like, oh, I'm just kidding, but your body doesn't know that. And now you have all that for me. Like I haven't got sick in like two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, like I, do, I barely get sick. And if I ever start to feel like a little like, like a little sniffle, I, I'll chew on like three cloves of raw garlic. It's absolutely disgusting. And I'll jump in the sun and the next day I feel, feel like a million dollars. Yeah. 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 Disgusting. You have to, you chew it and like the garlic releases this like this chemical and it just like stings your mouth. So you got to swallow it. So I've like, sw I would be chewing. I'm like, oh shit, swallow it real quick. This is absolutely disgusting. I don't recommend anyone do, do it unless uh, they don't want to get sick when they're feeling sick. But the second I get a little tiny hint of like a little sniffles, like, oh, nope, garlic and sauna. Oh, yeah. Yeah. every single time there's this um really so i'm also very bad at meditating it's something i avoid like the plague i just i'm i need to move i get very anxious if i'm sitting still which means i need to meditate more like if i'm being honest with yeah. myself you know what i mean like that's like my red flag but um there's this app called othership and they actually have a location i think it, it's open in new york city but it's it incorporates a lot of uh, music and movement and it's still a lot of breath work so you're getting the benefits of that meditative experience but for someone like me who's like a little bit more fidgety i think it's a really good app for people to check out you know what i just realized is i think a really good idea would would to do some type of meditation practice with gr like groups of people right mm -hmm. if you think about this you think about the gym people love going to the gym because it's a group activity you know guys like it because you see some hot girls girls like it because they see their friends and vice versa but the, the point is it's a giant group activity you look forward to communicating with people right mm -hmm. Versus you take away the gym and now let's say you live in an apartment complex and you're now you can only work out in a gym in your apartment complex that nobody goes to. I would probably say 75% of people would not push as hard as they do when they go to a gym with other human beings around them, right? When you think of meditation practices, meditation you do by yourself. It's you versus you. And 
there's not that group activity. It's not the Pilates where the music's playing, everyone's high-fiving, right? They do that with yoga, right? How many people are more successful at doing yoga than meditation? So I think if someone's really struggling and they really want to take it serious, I'm sure you could find some some group meditate meditative practices and I think you'll have a higher probability of success if you're not if you're not the most self-disciplined person. Mm-hmm.